Hello and welcome to the broadcast today. This is Roger and Cheryl Hutchins, and we are delighted you're here. We only want to invite you to get your uh, Bibles, your notebooks, or, or your device, whatever your Bible is on. So many times today, I don't even I have the Bible with me, but I don't even have to open it because I'm either in my phone, my iPad, or something. Uh, or write the letters off my. Uh, but many times it is good, though, to go back to your Bible, sit down and look and let your eyes fall on the pages so uh, it, it increases your faith. But uh, but anyhow, let me uh, just welcome you today. And I, I feel like God wants to just uh, move in a special way. We are on Now Faith number 15, uh, Lesson 15. And uh, uh, Cheryl's been doing a tremendous job. The Word of the Lord's been coming. Uh, I'm telling you, I can tell the Word of the Lord is sharp. <laughs> Sharper than any two-edged sword, and and whenever it begins to come for, forth, it begins to. Uh, well, when we say cut, it's not cutting as far as trying to damage us, but it's beginning to to uh, take things away that uh, is not like Him, is not like Jesus. Jesus was the Word made flesh, so the Word begins to shape everything in that image of Jesus Christ. So that's what this these lessons are doing. I invite you to go back on our YouTube page, find the rest of the lessons. This is 15, so there's 14 before uh, before this. And uh, if you go back on our YouTube page, Roger Hutchins, um, and uh, there's there's two of them out there. The one you need to go to is the one with the... Uh, uh, the, the more most current one is where I have the gray hair, not the... Uh, not the older one, but uh, anyhow, if you will uh, go back and uh, find those, and there, there, there's some on both both of them. But the best one is uh, to find these current uh, lessons. Uh, is there? We're going we're doing some different things. We're trying to uh, get our uh, software and everything so we can have those consistently going out there. Uh, we're adding other uh, places where we can uh, where we can stream. Uh, so be watching for those and we'll let you know as we add them on and uh, so pray for us as we begin to expand we're believing God to uh, uh, do some special things as far as our uh, being able to uh, go on video uh, on, on television maybe uh, uh, the main thing was to do it we're doing all the live available live that we can do right now and we're believing God to expand it. Uh, a lot of that depends on the people that will stand with us, help us, uh, give to us. Uh, you'll be watching for that at the end of the uh, uh, program. There's ways that you can give to us on there. There are mailing address plus uh, on our Facebook page, there's a, there's a link to a PayPal. Uh, it's just Roger, Roger Hutchins uh, uh, Ministries, Roger Hutchins. And uh, so uh, there's a link there that you can do that. Uh, today right now Cheryl we're going to pray I want you to pray today uh, there's somebody that needs that's in need of prayer there's somebody that needs us to touch God for for uh, for her uh, there's a lady watching there's somebody and there's others there's others there's, there's I see a, I see a young man you know there's a lot a lot of young men today that are in such uh, confusion so frustrated because they don't know the direction for the life they don't know which way to go and and there's so many voices that are trying to uh, speak to them, uh, and and we're gonna we're gonna pray right now. We're gonna pray for that lady that that just is desperate to hear from the Lord, and we're gonna pray for for young men today that just need nest, desperately need to hear from the Lord. You know, uh, there, there's we, we the enemy tries to use this thing generational gap and all these things, and I understand all that. Uh, you know, I started ministry when I was 17 years old, and it seemed to be hard to get into uh, just uh, because everybody looked at you as not knowing anything, and I didn't know anything. I didn't know I didn't know anything, but, uh, but uh, you know, as, as I grew, you know, and I understand uh, that, that you want to be used of God just like the rest of us. Uh, but let me tell you something, and you want your life to go good. You want to be successful. Uh, but... We, we talked yesterday, uh, last week, about humbling yourself. And some of that just takes humbling yourself so that God can move uh, through you. And you need now faith. So Cheryl's um, going to pray. I want you to pray with her. And then we'll go into the lesson. Father, we just bless you today. And we thank you for your presence and the sense of your presence. It's We feel it right here in the room. And we know that you are with us. And 
we just intend to speak the words that you have placed within us. But we want to speak to you, Father, about the people who are watching this video that have true needs. Um, everyone does. But some have not learned how to really trust you with their needs. And they don't really know and are absolutely certain of how much you love them. And I just ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and to glorify Jesus, that you release your spirit and your grace to the people whose hearts are truly crying out to you. Jesus. For the lady or the young woman who just is so desperate to hear something from you, you know what she needs, Father, because you see what's in her heart. You see what's truly troubling. Whether she recognizes it or not is another matter, but you know what it is that's truly troubling her. And I ask you, Father, to go deep within her. You said that you desire truth in our inward parts. That's the depth of our being. And so expose to her what it is that the real problem is and then show her the answer and the solution to it. And I thank you for that. I pray for young men all over the earth today, Father. Yes, Jesus. You have um, placed men in positions of authority. We all in Christ have positions of authority. But in the world system, you use men many times because they, they were created that way to be able to carry the weight of things more so than women, although many women think they're equal and can do just as good a job, and sometimes that's true. But the real truth of the matter is, is the man has been designated as the head under Christ. And so... I just ask you, Father, to open the eyes of young men who are listening and help them realize how important they are to your kingdom, how important they are to family, how important they are to the body of Christ, how much you desire to reveal yourself to them and your ways to them so that they can be instructors in whatever area or degree that is, Father whether it's just family, whether it's in a teaching capacity, whether it's in politics, your hand is upon Jesus. them, and you desire them to know you so deeply and so closely, and not to be afraid of a close relationship with you or a close relationship with other men in the body of Christ. There's a lot of confusion in the gender world situations today, but you've got it all straightened out. It, you never were confused about gender. And you didn't create anybody with confusion about gender. No matter what the world says or what Satan says, that's not the truth. Those are lies. So I thank you, Father, now that you do your work, your great depth of work inside of hearts and souls, Father. Because you love us. You love all of humanity so very much. Help us to receive your love, to not doubt it, but just to truly receive it and know that you're only going to do good for us, and that's what it's all about. And we thank you for it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 All right. Um, so last week we went over um, <clears throat> Luke 12, 22 through 34, and 1 Peter 5, 6 through 11, basically talking about casting our cares and not worrying about things. But I wanted to um, pick it up from something in 1 Peter. And it's verse 9. I'm going to reread it. It says, referring to Satan, it says, Resist him firm in your faith knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being accomplished or happening to the brethren who are in the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself perfect or complete, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Now, I wanted to read 
read that because it says suffered for a little while. You know, when you're walking through sufferings, it seems like an eternity. <laughs> but it isn't. There's another scripture Paul wrote about that talked about our light affliction that's momentary. And we're to focus on the unseen things, the eternal things, not the little suffering. See, Satan, when he comes about like a roaring lion, that's what he screams at us. You're in pain, you're suffering, you're hurting, you've got all these problems. They're going to last forever. You'll never get out of this. Well, those are lies. He's the father of lies. And not only that, Jesus said he was a murderer from the beginning. Amen. From the beginning, he was a murderer and a liar. And what does he lie to us for? Because he wants to murder us. Amen. See, all the things we talked about yesterday, we mentioned that they were part of the realm of death. Worry, anxiety, caring, the, trying to fix it. Yeah, last week. <laughs> um, those are part of the realm of death. So let's go now. And um, let me just say these, this, and that is a reminder that all the followers of Jesus have always and are now, and will in the future, go through sufferings and have the same type of experiences. The situation itself may be different, but the responses of our heart are all the same. We all have the capability of the same feelings and the same thoughts. So um, we all suffer experiences that produce these things. But... The point of all of this is the testing of our faith. Are we going to stand in the faith right now? Or are we going to listen to all the thoughts that are contrary to the scripture? But our faith is tested to bring us to an end result. It is not going to go on forever. The scripture says Jesus is the author of our faith. Jesus, Jesus is the finisher of our Amen. faith. So there is a finished faith where we're stable. All right, so um, the end result, as we just read in 1 Peter, is that we're to be completed, confirmed, strengthened. Uh, James said thoroughly furnished or thoroughly fitted for the work of the kingdom. That's what all of the testing is about. It's like Roger opened up with about the sword Cutting, it isn't cut to kill us. That's, right. That's Satan who's a murderer. The sword cuts into us to divide asunder soul and spirit, joints and marrow, to bring health to us. Yeah. Uh, you know, if um, a person has, let's say, for instance, gangrene in a part of their body, sometimes that part of the body has to be cut out in order for the rest of the body to have life. Well, that's a similar situation with our heart. Our heart comprises our soul and spirit. And when there's things in the heart of us that are detrimental, that are hurting us, then the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, has to go in there, cut those things out, and then bring healing. Amen. Healing brings us to wholeness. Healing brings us to being firmly established. Healing brings us to a strength where we can, just like that, instantly recognize the assaults of Satan. We don't have to put up with it. We do not have to put up with it. Mm -hmm. Hear me. We do not have to put up with it. And there is a place in God where we don't put up with it. Where we get mature enough in our faith to recognize these things and say... Get away from me. Just go on. Amen. That's not according to the Word of God. And I believe the Word of God and just tell him what the Word of God says. That's what Jesus did. He said it is written. And what did the devil do? He finally gave up and left. He said, well, I can't do this. So he, he thought by crucifying Jesus, he really fixed it now. But the scripture says if he, Satan, had known what would happen when he crucified the Lord of glory. He would never have done it. That's right. Think about that. That's very interesting. 
All right, so let's move on here. All right, um, <clears throat> so all of these things that we go through are to establish us, um, but it happens, establishing, the establishing happens by God and in God to keep us in Christ all the time. So we're firmly established. And we can come to experience experience the reality of what we're having faith for um, and to know and live in God's eternal glory and he said it's Christ in us the hope of glory so as all of these things happen Christ is being formed in us the mind of Christ is being formed in us it's to establish us um, <clears throat> It's the process of knowing God, who he really is, what his nature is really like, and knowing the reality that, yes, God really exists, and yes, God is really interested in what's going on in life on the earth right here and now. And yes, God's interested in what's going on in my life. And then his word coming in, making sense to us, and being manifested to us and through us. Because the thing about it is, is God wants everyone to come to the knowledge of the truth. And Jesus said, I am the truth. So the more that we're established, the more we're able to give that truth to someone else. God will put us with people that need what we've learned. Amen. All right, 1 Corinthians 10, 13 through 14 says, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, mankind. But God is faithful. Now you talk about faith, God has faith. He has faith in you. He has faith because he's imparted things to you and he has faith that you're going to do what's right and you're going to stay in the kingdom yeah. of God. But he's faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you're able to handle. Think about that. He has faith in you. But he will with the temp temptation also make a way of escape so that you can be able to bear it. Remember that the suffering is only for a little while. Not all eternity. Not even long periods of time here in this life. Amen. It's only for a little while and you can bear it. He's made a way for you to bear it. And then he says um, in verse 14, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Do you know when you let the temptations become more important, the worries, the fear, the cares, that that becomes an idol in your life? Idolatry is a terrible thing. Yeah. You're either going to worship God, believe His word, or you're going to trust in the worry, the fears, the cares, and let them become what you worship. Think about that. That's a phenomenal statement, but it's the truth. It's the truth. All right, so 2 Timothy 3.17 says, That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished, that is, fully equipped unto all good works. These are the things that God is um, helping us to understand. There's a reason for the testing, for the temptation, for the things we experience. Because the scripture says that strong meat is for those who are able to discern between good and evil. We have to discern what's really going on in the spiritual world. Just because there's a screaming, roaring lion trying to distract us, we don't have to have that. We can stand firm on the Word of God, speak the Scripture, and Satan has to flee. Amen. That's what the Scripture says. He has to flee. All right, so we're to be thoroughly furnished so that we can do good works the scripture said that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil that's what the father wants us to do 
He wants us to be able to go around doing good, speaking good words. Um, the Proverbs are full. I'm trying to think of the exact scripture, but I think it says wisdom is a tree of life. It also talks about pleasant words brings healing to the bones. Think about that. There's all kinds of scripture that tell us these things that do good things for us. All right, so let's see here. Faith is necessary for everything in our life. I say that quite frequently because I don't think sometimes we really think about that, but it is. It's necessary for everything. And I was thinking about this this morning. Um, there are many people who use faith and focus their faith on getting material goods like new cars and new houses and this and that. And those all have their place. I believe in prosperity. I believe God desires that for us. There are conditions based on that, um, which is not our lesson today, but hopefully I'll get to that at some point. But God is first and foremost interested in developing our character. See, righteousness is equity of character or act. That's the definition of the Greek word. And so God is interested in building his character, his righteousness, which produces right thoughts, right feelings, right actions, things that are a blessing to God and a blessing to humanity, uh, things that will produce a right result that will be beneficial to all concerned. So... He's looking for those who are trustworthy. One way that we can be trustworthy, and really the starting point in a way, is we present our body a living sacrifice, as Romans 12, 1 says to us. Bring your body. Lay it on the altar before God. Do you know, I was thinking on this back a few weeks ago, that... Um, Jesus had to address some issues because the Pharisees and Sadducees were going around saying it's not the altar that sanctifies the gift, but it's the gift on the altar. And Jesus said, you got it all wrong, boys. Which is greater, the gift or the altar that sanctifies the gifts? And that's what we do yeah. when we lay ourselves in faith spiritually and offer our body to God to be alive, to live, not die. He wants us to be a living sacrifice. That altar begins to work holiness in us because we've said, here I am. Take this life of mine, this body in which my life dwells, <laughs> um, and use it for your service. Something begins to happen in us and that sacrificial gift to the Lord begins to work holiness in us. It begins to work freedom and just a whole host of things. And so that's important to God. And in presenting our body on the altar, we lay down our life, which means we put all of our desires, we put all our selfish tendencies on that altar. And... Um, just say, your will be done concerning me. Let your will be worked through this body. Let your kingdom come in such a tremendous way that others can see and be drawn to that kingdom, be drawn to the Father. All right, so um, back when we were talking about James and going through the scriptures in James chapter 1, we talked about the crown of life and how that was far more important and um, that the crown of life is a symbol of a new ma mindset and a sound mind. Jesus paid for us to have that. When he took the crown of thorns and it was beaten into his brow, the scripture says, that was for the chastisement for our peace. See, we deserve the chastisement for disobeying God in the first place. 
But he did that so we could have peace. And then he said, I give you my peace. So what we do is we receive that peace. But this crown of life encompasses all of these things, and that's what we have. This doesn't happen in the afterlife when we get to heaven. It happens right here, right now. These are symbols to be received and understood. So um, this is a very major thing for the mind of Christ to be developed in us. And having the wisdom of God to know how to handle every situation. And we're about out of time, so I'm going to let Roger go ahead and finish up for this lesson. And Cheryl, I, I'll tell you what I'm feeling. Uh, you know, we've talked about presenting your bodies a living sacrifice, and we've talked about... And you know, sometimes those sound like religious things. Uh, the most important thing is, how's God dealing with you? We're talking about now faith, and sometimes I know that to the majority of the world, faith is uh, sounds like a foreign uh, concept. Uh, you use faith every day of some kind. You 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 know you put gas in your car, you get in, and you turn on the key, and you have faith it's going to work because uh, you know because you know things have been set in motion. Well, the reason we don't have more faith in God is because we don't get in His Word. That's what we're trying to provide. Is a way that you can get a more into the Word of God. I know there's a there's a, a, a thousand of more more thousands of preachers out there on television, radio, on different uh, your your churches, and and that's that's good. But some of you, uh, you know, you need to know get in the Word of God. We you wouldn't go out and knowing your gas tank is empty and not and get in your car and try to run try to start it would you that's the reason sometimes we don't have faith is we have not uh, got in the, the word tank. we haven't got um, he will supply all our need according to his riches well let me tell you a way to look his riches is the word of god his riches is is in that 66 book Bible uh, that you uh, have, and if you don't have one, if you'll write me, I'll be I'll be sure to get you one and mail it to you. Honestly, I'll do that. If you don't have a Bible, because there's where we uh, apply our faith. We begin to read the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now you're hearing the Word of God as Cheryl's been teaching today is. As we're talking about the scriptures, uh, and we want to help supply uh, fuel for your tank, if you will, or for your spiritual tank, uh, because whenever you get up in the morning, you know you need faith. You know we go to uh, we used to <laughs> pray this uh, this uh, uh, prayer, and there was not much faith in it. Uh, <laughs> now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. You know, and it sound like our faith was, and we might that we might he might take us any minute. Uh, you know that that's that's not a faith prayer. Don't teach your children that. Uh, but but the faith prayer is I'm going to lay down in peace. Amen. I'm going to lay down, and and God's going to give His beloved sleep. See, so there's where there's where faith is, and we believe the Word of God concerning uh, the, you, the our peace that we're going to wake up in the morning. We're going to be able to. Uh, be empowered to do the work of the Lord. We're going to be empowered to bless our families. We're going to be empowered to uh, just do the work of the Lord. We're going to be empowered to share Jesus with somebody. Uh, there's almost 8 billion people on this planet, and surely we can show, share Jesus with somebody. So I want to invite you to do that. Uh, you know, we're, we're challenging you with this word of faith because, uh, because when we begin to hear a message about faith, sometimes it's easy to say, well, you know, I'm glad they got faith. No, God wants all of us that believe, and it, it takes faith for us to even become a believer. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we have to believe on the Lord Jesus yes. Christ, our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and then whenever we do that, so you've got more faith. It's given to every man, the scripture says, a measure of faith. And that measure of faith brings us to Christ. It brings us to the Word of God. It brings us to that place. Uh, something brought you here today. You've got faith that you're going to hear something that's going to edify you and, 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 and build you up on your most 
holy faith. faith. Amen. It's been a pleasure to be with you today. And, uh, I'm, uh, you know, don't, don't go another minute without applying your faith to your salvation, applying your faith. Uh, if you need a touch from God in your physical body, apply your faith there. And uh, it's a pleasure for us to come to you week after week and uh, to, to give you what God deposits in us, the faith that's stirring in us. And uh, we believe God's going to move on for you uh, out of this message, out of these lessons. Go to our, our YouTube page. Get the rest of them. This is number, uh, I think it's 15, and uh, there's others there. There will be another one next week. And uh, uh, YouTube page, you can scroll back on, on Facebook to find some of them. It's a lot easier to go to YouTube, and the list is right there. So uh, we're going to... Uh, Thank God for you today. God, thank God for those that are watching. Thank God for the way you've moved and touched them. God, I pray peace upon them, God, and their faith be increased in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to contact God, Roger Hutchins Ministries, the address will be on the screen. Uh, also, you can message us through Facebook. And uh, we love you. God bless you. And we'll see you next week.